September 15, 1940. The skies over southern England are black with aircraft. More than 1,500 German planes, Henkels, Dorniers, Messerschmitts, fly in perfect formation toward London. Below, RAF pilots scramble into spitfires and hurricanes, knowing they're outnumbered three to one. This is the Battle of Britain's bloodiest day, where radar towers scan desperately and every gun matters. The fate of an entire nation hangs on propeller blades and .303 machine guns. So what happens if an F-35 Lightning II is thrown into this battle? Can it turn the tide, or is it just a brief spark in the darkness? 11.47 a.m., somewhere over Kent. The F-35's ANAPG-81 radar sweeps the sky, painting targets 150 miles out. The pilot sees what no one in 1940 can even imagine, a God's-eye view of the entire German formation, tracked, tagged, and prioritized before they've even crossed the channel. The stealth coating designed to defeat Soviet S-400 systems now faces chain-home radar operating at 20-30 MHz. It's like using a telescope to find a ghost. The RCS is 0.005 square meters. Chain home needs something closer to 100. The F-35 is functionally invisible. But there are problems already. No GPS, though satellites won't launch for another 38 years. No data link to AWACS or ground control. The INS drifts slightly with every maneuver. Fuel burns faster than expected. Modern JP-8 doesn't exist here, and the makeshift Avgas blend isn't optimized. The jet has 182 rounds of 25mm ammunition and four AIM-120 AMRAMs. After that, it's a very expensive paperweight. 12.03 p.m. The German bomber stream approaches. Heinkel H-11s fly in tight Vs protected by BF-109 escorts weaving above. These pilots are veterans, men who've flown over Poland, France, and now Britain. Their formations are textbook, their discipline ironclad. Gunners scan the horizon watching for the telltale glint of a Spitfire's wings. They have no idea something is already locked onto them from 80 miles away, something their eyes will never see. 12.11 p.m. First Engagement the F-35 climbs to 35,000 feet, well above the bomber's ceiling of 21,000, and selects targets. The ASO radar cycles through emissions control, going active for just three seconds. Lock, 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 lock. Four AMRAMs drop from internal bays. The German formation flies on oblivious. 38 seconds later, four Heinkels simply disintegrate. No warning, no tracer fire arcing toward them. Just silent, white-hot detonations that rip through aluminum like tissue paper. Wreckage tumbles through the formation. Pilots scream into radios demanding to know what happened. One gunner swears he saw nothing. No attacker, no muzzle flash, just death arriving from nowhere. Chaos spreads. BF-109s break formation, diving and weaving, searching for an enemy they can't see. Their radios crackle with panic. Wo ist er? Ich sehe nichts. Meanwhile, the F-35 is already 40 miles away, repositioning. The pilot switches to guns. 12.19 p.m. The lightning drops to 15,000 feet, approaching from the bombers 6 o'clock. The Gau 22A rotary cannon spins up. At 300 rounds per minute, the 25mm tungsten penetrators are designed to shred modern composite armor. Against riveted aluminum and fabric control surfaces, they're obscene. A two-second burst tears through a Dornier D-17. The bomber doesn't explode, it simply comes apart. Wings folding like paper, fuselage splitting open. Fourteen more bombers die in the next four minutes. The sky fills with smoke and falling metal. But the Luftwaffe isn't finished. BF-109 pilots, desperate and enraged, tighten their turns, trying to flush out the invisible demon. One of them gets lucky, catches a glimpse of the F-35's contrail at high altitude. He radios the sighting. Six Messerschmitts converge, firing speculatively into empty sky. 
And here's where the F-35 faces real danger numbers. It can't dogfight 600 enemy aircraft. A stray 7.92 mm round hits the vertical stabilizer. No critical damage, but a reminder. Fuel is at 42%, ammunition 96 rounds left. One more pass. 12.27 p.m. The F-35 makes a final run on a bomber group struggling to hold formation. The cannon roars. Five Heinkels spiral down in flames. Then the pilot breaks hard, climbs through 40,000 feet, and vanishes eastward over the channel, leaving the Luftwaffe to wonder if they fought a machine or a ghost. On the ground, RAF pilots landing at Biggin Hill see the carnage and can't explain it. German formations broken. 23 confirmed kills with no corresponding British losses in that sector. No bullet holes, no cannon shells, just gone. Intelligence officers scramble, but there's no data. Chain home saw nothing, no radar blips, no intercepts. Pilots whisper about the Phantom of Kent, an invisible defender that strikes without warning. German air crews, rattled and demoralized, begin to question the entire air campaign. If the British have a weapon like this, something that kills from beyond visual range, how can they ever win? But here's the reality. The F-35 changed one engagement, not the war. It has no logistics tail, no spare parts, no ammunition resupply. Modern avionics can't be maintained by 1940s mechanics. The jet fuel substitute will destroy the engine in a week. Even if it flew every day, it couldn't cover the entire English coastline. The Luftwaffe could shift tactics, night raids, low-level attacks, overwhelming numbers. One fighter, no matter how advanced, can't hold a thousand-mile front. Still, the psychological impact is real. The myth grows. Something out there sees through clouds, kills from nowhere, and can't be touched. Goering hears the reports and dismisses them as British propaganda, but the pilots know. They felt it. The balance of terror shifts even slightly. Bomber crews hesitate. Morale cracks. It wins a battle. It compresses hours of desperate dogfighting into minutes of silent execution. But it doesn't rewrite history, because history is built on production lines, oil refineries, and the will of millions, not one ghost in the sky. But what do you think? Could the shock of facing stealth technology 70 years early change the Luftwaffe strategy? Would Hitler call off the air campaign or double down with even more planes? Drop your thoughts below, and if you want to see what happens when modern armor crashes into D-Day or a nuclear submarine appears at Midway, hit that subscribe button. History's full of battles waiting to be reimagined.